One of the most uh, rare and endangered ecosystems on the planet are temperate rainforests. North America has half of all temperate rainforests in the world. It's less than 1% of the land, the terrestrial area of, of the planet. And in North America, we have pinched between the Pacific Ocean and the coastal uh, mountains. We have a temperate rainforest that runs from southern Alaska to northern California has the bi highest biomass, weight of living things, of any ecosystem on the planet. And that's because we have big trees. And one of the mysteries has always been, how can we get such big trees when it rains a lot, it's a rainforest, and the rain washes a lot of the nutrients out of the soil. The soil, in fact, is very poor in nitrogen. So how can you have a nitrogen-poor ecosystem and yet these gigantic trees that are built on nitrogen and carbon? Well, it turns out the secret is the salmon. You see, the salmon are born in the forest, in, in freshwater rivers. And we know that the salmon need the forest because if you clear cut a watershed where the salmon spawn, salmon populations plummet and usually disappear. The salmon need the forest for the canopy to keep the waters cool because the babies are very sensitive to temperature. We need the forest to provide the feed when the babies are, are getting ready to go down to the ocean. They need the feed. And uh, we need the forest to hold the soil so that it doesn't spoil the spawning gravel. So we knew that. But now the interesting thing is, if you look at the nitrogen on the land, it's almost exclusively nitrogen-14, which is a, the normal isotope of nitrogen. When you look in the oceans, the nitrogen uh, has also has a large component of nitrogen-15, which is slightly heavier. It's got an extra neutron in it. And you can tell nitrogen-15 from nitrogen-14 in your, in your instruments. So, baby salmon born in the forest, protected by the forest. They go out to sea. There are five species of salmon on the coast. And depending on the species, they stay out to sea for two to five years, all the while growing and loading up with nitrogen-15 from the oceans. So when they come back to spawn, they are loaded like little bullets of, of nitrogen-15 fertilizer. And as they come into the estuaries, as the killer whales and the seals are eating them, then they hit the river and the eagles and the, whale and the uh, bears and the wolves are all eating the salmon. And as they poop in the woods, they're spreading nitrogen-15 throughout the forest. And one of the major vectors are bears. The bears, uh, um, they'll fish together. They're a solitary animal. But when the salmon are running, they'll fish together in the same pool. But the minute they grab one, they take off. They don't want to eat it with the other bears around. And they'll go up to 150 meters on either side of the river. They sit down. They eat the best parts, which you all know is the brains and the belly and the eggs. And usually they'll leave the carcass, the rest of the carcass. So about half the salmon is left there. They go back for another one. And a bear will take about 600 salmon out of the river in a year. And that salmon carcass that's left is immediately pounced on by salamanders and beetles and ravens and everything. But the major vector is f flies. So the flies lay their eggs on the carcass. Within a few days, that carcass will be just a seething mass of maggots, which are consuming that flesh, loading up with nitrogen-15. And then they drop to the forest floor and overwinter uh, as pupae. And the next spring, as they hatch, in the trillions, it's just at the time that the birds from South America are coming through on their way to the Arctic to have their babies. So the timing is that the salmon are now feeding the flies, which are programmed then to, to hatch just at the time that they will feed the, uh, the birds from South America. When you look at the trees, you can take a core of the trees and pull it out. You can show there are are fat rings, which is l a lot of growth, or skinny rings. You can measure the amount of nitrogen-15 in the rings and show when there's a fat ring, there's way more nitrogen-15. And then we've got government records going back 50 years, and you can show when there's a fat ring, that was the year there was a big run of salmon. So the, it's very, very clear the salmon are the major pulse of fertilizer that the trees are getting. The trees respond to that. Many of the the uh, salmon spawn and then die in the water. They, they sink to the bottom. And if you come up a, a stream a few weeks later, the bottom is covered with a thick mat of fungus and bacteria that are consuming the flesh. And the fungus and bacteria are eaten by, by invertebrates, insects and things. When the babies emerge from the gravel four months later, the baby salmon, 
the water is filled with food that is loaded with nitrogen 15 that comes from the parents' bodies. So you see this unbelievably beautiful system of interconnectedness where the oceans give birth, you know, feed the salmon and their oceans are linked to the rivers and, and lakes which are linked to the, the forest and are linked to the southern hemisphere. All of that is a single system.